The controller ICs used in power electronics often contain more than what is called a controller in the sense of control theory. Very often the modulator is contained in there and therefore you get actually already the duty cycle as the output signal which is coded in a pulse width modulation stream. Nevertheless, you can use a control loop to model the control behavior of a power supply. The topology of the power converter is contained in the power stage block. So that is the buck converter, the boost, the flyback, the forward, half bridge, or whatever we have at hand. These converters have a DC transfer function we, that we have looked into already, but they also have AC transfer functions. From a control point of view, we can have the input voltage, the supply voltage to our power stage as a disturbance signal and the duty cycle as the input. And as the power stage is mixing those two together on top of its AC transfer function, we get the output voltage from it in a control sense. In most cases, you're interested in the output voltage to follow a specific desired signal. In a DC-DC converter, that would be a DC signal, but in an audio amplifier, in a motor drive, the desired signal might be an AC signal, might be actually the music in terms of audio, and that's what you want to have amplified at the output. So you take a feedback, you sense it, and typically you multiply it with the factor of K, which very often is simply a voltage division by two resistors, as the output voltages of the power stage are often too high level to be used in the low voltage and in the auxiliary circuits. To close the control loop, we subtract the feedback signal from the desired input voltage and get the error or the output of an error amplifier as the input of the controller. Specifically for a buck converter in continuous conduction mode, we have learned about the DC transfer function to be simply the duty cycle. Now the AC transfer function of a buck converter is described by its passive components towards the output. And only for a buck converter, you can use a linear time invariant circuit to derive the transfer function. In terms of boost converters, flyback converters, buck boost converters, the power stage is in the middle of those components and therefore it's not a linear time invariant circuit and the analysis is more complicated than that. And the end result contains right half plane zeros which are dependent on the load and the duty cycle. So for the case of a buck converter, we have the DC transfer function in the nominator and the AC transfer function forms the denominator of the overall transfer function of the buck converter. The body plot of a buck converter contains the resonant peak, has an offset coming from the duty cycle times the input voltage, and has its singularity at 1 over 2 pi times square root LC. Therefore, the phase crosses minus 90 degree at that point, and as we have a second order filter formed by the inductor and the capacitor, we end up having minus 180 degrees phase shift for the frequency approaching infinity. Now, two of the most used controllers are PI and PID controllers. The PI controller is shown in an analog implementation here. The transfer function consists of a P part, the proportional part, and the integrating part, the I part. Now, the desired part of the body plot is as much as possible gain towards the low frequencies to correct for the errors. On the other hand, an undesired effect is that the PI controller further turns the frequency towards negative and combining it with the minus 180 degrees that the buck converter can achieve towards infinity in the first place 
you could actually imagine scenarios where the face turns more than 180 degrees while the loop transfer function still has a positive gain and that would be the criterion for oscillation. And oscillation is what you try to avoid in power electronics. And as we try to avoid that kind of oscillation in power electronic circuits, we need to carefully place that zero here. Now the PID controller contains another capacitor and therefore another zero. It ends up having a proportional part, an integrational part, and a derivative part. The extra zero compared to the PI controller shows up here, adds further gain towards high frequencies, but also turns the phase positive to compensate for a potential instability from the PI version. And now it's your turn to sketch the overall loop transfer function of the open loop using the buck converter transfer function and combine it with the PI controller and furthermore using the same transfer function from the buck converter and combine it with the PID controller. 